Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's take a look at the orbital magnetic quantum number m sub l. Now in a way we've already talked about it a little bit in the previous video, but now we're going to make it clear what it represents. So we now realize that we have subshells that are defined by the orbital quantum number l, and those subshells are s, p, d, f, g, and so forth. They're defined by the value given to l, the orbital quantum number, so when l equals zero, the subshell is S, when L equals 1, the subshell is P, when L equals 2, the subshell is D, and so forth. And then there are a number of angular momentum quantum states that can exist, and they're defined by the orbital magnetic quantum number M sub L. So what do we mean by those angular momentum quantum states? Now, in a particular subshell, there are various orientations that the angular momentum can have, and those orientations are those various angular momentum quantum states. So m sub l being equal to 0, plus 1, minus 1, plus 2, minus 2, and so forth, all the way up to the value of l, notice that if l, for example, is equal to 0, m sub l can only have one value, which is 0, that creates what we call the S subshell, and therefore there's only one direction the angular momentum can have relative to the z-axis. But if L is equal to 1, then M sub L can take on three values, minus 1, 0, and plus 1. All these represent the P subshell, but what that means is that the angular momentum can have three different directions. So there's basically three different what we call orbitals that can exist in the P subshell. And we'll talk more about that in a later video. If L is equal to 2, that means M sub L can have five possible values, making up the D subshell. The values can be minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. So that defines a subshell within the shell for the energy level. Uh, in this case, that would be L equals 2, m sub l can have the values minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2, that makes up the d subshell, but m sub l having five values indicates there can be five different directions for the angular momentum. And if l equals 3, that means that m sub l can have seven values, and therefore that makes up the f subshell, and therefore there are seven different angular momentum directions, making the possibility of seven orbitals, and again we'll talk about that. So each orbital then would be associated with an angular momentum direction. Again, it would not be a stationary direction in space, it would be direction relative to an arbitrary axis, let's call it the z-axis, but because of the uncertainty principle, the direction can rotate in any possible way, it's just that we understand what the angle must be, but because of the uncertainty principle, we don't know where exactly it's going to be pointing to, so it forms kind of a certain shape defined by the angle and defined by the fact that can go rotate all the way around the axis, and we'll show you some more details about that as well. So here we go, when L equals 3, we can then define the magnitude of the angular momentum by the square root of L times L plus 1 times h bar. So since L is 3, that will be equal to the square root of 12 times h bar, which means we have these seven possible values, which means we have seven possible directions for the angular momentum. And that's what we mean by the orbital magnetic quantum number m sub l, it essentially defines the different directions the angular momentum can have, which therefore defines the different orbitals in which the electrons in the hydrogen atom can exist. And so all that is now beginning to tie together, and we'll show you some more videos where we explicitly show you what that actually means visually. That's how it's done. And of course I don't have any of those videos right now, I have to wait till I make some more later.